At seven foot two, James Donaldson enjoyed a 20 year career as a professional basketball player, becoming an NBA All Star. Retiring in 1995, Donaldson opened a successful chain of physical therapy and training clinics. His book, Standing Above the Crowd, based off his skills at motivational speaking, is packed with tips to show how to be a success in whatever career path one chooses. He's inspired business leaders, athletes, parents, and students alike on how to overcome obstacles and create a plan that elevates your game to the best that you can be. You know, as I, as I often joke, standing above the crowd isn't necessarily about how to be seven feet tall, although that'd be nice, I'm sure, for most folks. Uh, it's about standing above the crowd out there, the, the crowd of your competitors, the crowd of folks who are... Uh, you know, just going along to get along and you want to be better than that. And it's more than even standing out from the crowd. You're standing above with a better viewpoint, a better perspective. With, uh, I actually have a copy here for you to take a look at real quick. Uh, what, what I'm doing with Standing Above the Crowd is I go around the country and now internationally as we're putting the book into Chinese and into Spanish uh, and speaking to audiences about how to stand above the crowd and be the very best they can be. Uh, executing their game plan in life and striving for their goals and really applying themselves. And, and I look at myself over the last several years, uh, you know, to have a 20-year professional basketball career and have a 20-plus career that's still ongoing as a small business entrepreneur. There's some commonalities in that as far as uh, uh, success strategies and, and things it takes to really stay on track and keep on going. Uh, you know, people look at uh, successful people and think that they're always on top of their game. But there's ups and downs in, in the journeys that we take also. And we have to be able to navigate and, and manage our ways through uh, challenging times. We have to be able to make difficult decisions. And so standing above the crowd isn't so much about how to be seven feet tall. It's about uh, that negative, sometimes negative voice in your mind that continues to remind you and, and tell you falsely that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not capable, you can't do this, mama says you can't do that, see, and that's all negativity. So I'm trying to help people stand above that negative crowd, turn that crowd into a positive one in your mind, and continue to move on and be the very best you can be. And, and I know even, you know, as an athlete, I knew for sure I wasn't the, the best basketball player out there on the NBA courts. There was always somebody who could run faster, jump higher, shoot better, rebound better, block shots better. You know, but I wanted to be able to compete. And, and I was able to push myself and train myself to compete at the very highest level. And so I want to do the same as a published author and as a motivational speaker. Uh, there'll be more books to come. I, I love the genre of inspiring and motivating people. Uh, I love small business and being a small business entrepreneur because I think that's where it's at. Uh, we can uh, help more people to see that uh, the ability to go out there and run your own show and run your own business, put together your own team, your game plan, and stay on track and make that a success. Uh, there, there's so many rewards in doing such. Uh, and I think it's also a positive message to a lot of our underserved communities uh, that we can do these things. And we have the ability to do anything that we put our minds to. We have, you know, we're, all, we're all talented. We're all skilled. And so now it's just a matter of, okay, taking that talent, taking that skill, and applying it, and really pushing ourselves to fulfill, fulfill the potential that we have. You said me, you know. Well, you know, I have a, uh, a top ten list in my book, Standing Above the Crowd, for small business entrepreneurs. And one of the top ten uh, uh, bullet points is that realize early on that you don't know everything. See, so once we get over that hurdle and realize that, okay, I need to reach out and I re really need to form a team who could help me complete the mission and, and the objective I have at hand. Uh, you know, I think, I think it's human nature to, to take it upon ourselves and not ask for help until we really, really, really need help. But I want to just encourage people to surround themselves with positive and, and motivational and inspirational people from the start. I realize a lot of our folks in our community uh, come from single female headed households. I know that. I know a lot of our families are struggling and near poverty. Okay, but you take the situation that you have and then you add to it as many positive elements as you can. 
find a positive person to put in your life if you don't have a, a father or a mother at home. Uh, find you know one of your teachers at school who can teach you a little something extra once this class is over, help you with your homework. Find that coach who can see that athletic ability in you and, and have him or her train you and teach you and show you a bigger picture to fulfill, fulfill the potential that you have, just as my high school coach took the time to really help me tap into that vast well of potential that I didn't even know I had as a high school student. But my coach knew it. And he said, James, I see something in you. And you have the ability and the talent and the potential to really move on to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. And so I encourage all of our listeners out there to find that kind of person. Doesn't have to be a person who looks like you or the same age or same income, same as it doesn't have to be anything like that. Just somebody who's positive and somebody who has your best interests at heart. But I, I have a chapter in the book called The Three D Approach. And, and it's it's looking at life in a three-dimensional aspect. And the three D's are desire, dedication, and discipline. See? If you can if you can put those three elements into anything you do the classroom, the ball field, your, your, your life at home, whatever you want to do. Desire and dedication and discipline will keep you on track and help you to be the success that you can be. Well, I think when a person puts the time in to prepare themselves to take on whatever tasks it's, it's going to be in front of them. Uh, that helps kind of soften some of that intimidation and some of that uh, doubt that you may have that creeps upon you. Uh, I write a great story in, in my book, Standing Above the Crowd, about my very, very, very first NBA game uh, in Seattle, in the Kingdom, playing against the Los Angeles Lakers and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So, Coach Wilkins calls me in off the bench you know, second or third quarter, I can't quite remember the time of the game, but he calls me in off the bench and he says, James, go get Kareem. And, you know, I, I, I didn't, didn't understand this was going to be my moment. I, I didn't think I was going to play it, being a rookie in the first game. So I run on into the scorer's table and, and already my heart is, is palpitating like I had run wind sprints up and down for the last 10 minutes. My knees were getting shaky and wet and I'm sweating it and, I, and I'm just checking into the game. And, and so, and this was all because, you know, I had my self-doubt. I didn't know I could play against Kareem. I didn't think I could. Here he was, the all-time NBA scoring leader at that point. He had like 28,000 points in my first game, and I've got zero points, okay? And we line up on the foul line, and, and I'm getting ready to box him out. This is my assignment. Yeah. And the knees are shaking, <laughs> sweat's dripping, and Kareem's just looking at me saying, you know, this is going to be an easy night. <laughs> you know, it's going to be an easy night. There's, there's a little Ricky here. And, and, but see, we're all going to go through that kind of situation. Uh, when we take on tasks that we don't feel that we are able to do or that we're intimidated by or we have doubts about. But I tell you what, once the game, once the ball went through the net, we took it out of bounds and put, put it in play. Uh, you know, Kareem and I are jostling and, and, I, and I accidentally hit him. And I'm like, whoops, I, you know, I didn't know I'm not supposed to do that. But then I realized it was okay. That was part of the game. He, he didn't fall over and start writhing around in pain. Uh, and the game goes on and we're playing and, and sure, he's scoring and Sky hooking me to death, gets his 30, 35 points and I get my five or six chippy little points in. But at that moment I realized, you know, I belong. I can do this. See, I'm not going to be as great as Kareem. I mean, his job is to score 30 a night. But my job is to try to slow him down and make sure he didn't go for 50. See? And so we all are going to encounter those kind of situations. And my encouragement to all of us is don't shy away. You know, yeah, you're going to be nervous. I mean, I probably wet my pants, you know, and thought it was sweat. See, but yes, you're going to be nervous. And, and yes, you're going to be intimidated. But jump in with both feet and with a can-do attitude instead of a won't-do attitude. And you'll find yourself going miles and miles and miles further than you ever imagined. And that was the very beginning of a long, long, long NBA career for me, playing against the all-time greatest center in, in NBA history. Well, it's, it's really geared towards small business entrepreneurs, but it probably applies to any, anything and everybody. It's a top 10 list, a top 10 playbook, I call it, uh, in, in the book Standing Above the Crowd. And it starts out with things such as have a vision. I mean, I mean, start to understand what it is you want to do, okay? And, and, I, and I encourage young people especially, I mean, start even in elementary school. You know, we all talk about being 
the policeman, the fireman, you know, the banker, the accountant, all these things, uh, when we're really, really young, but we don't really start understanding what that's all about until we get to high school, college. So young people, start thinking about what it is you want to be, and then start putting a game plan in place on how you're going to get to that point. Other things are create a team. Uh, if you're a small business owner, you're going to need an accountant. You're going to need a, a, a financial advisor. You're going to need an attorney. You're going to need a tax person. You're going to need you know, all these kind of people on your team. And you, be, and you have to be able to listen to your advice and your advisors. Uh, they can tell you what you ought to do. It, the, the choice is still going to be ultimately up to you. Uh, also things such as realize early on that you, that you can't do everything. See, a lot of us wear many different hats in our small businesses. We turn the lights on, we're the janitor, we're the cleaning person, we're the retailer, we're the, working the cash register, we're running the catering service. We're doing everything from start to finish. And so you have to realize at some point you can't keep on doing everything, burning that midnight oil. So find help, get help, and add to your team to help you out to be even better than you are. Uh, another is realize early on that you don't know everything. See, a lot of us go into these things thinking that we know it all. We've had a couple, couple semesters of business 101 or what have you. And, but, you know, so much of learning how to run a successful small business is the on-the-job training, the real-life experiences that, that a textbook doesn't teach you. Um, another one is find your MVP. See, on every team there's somebody who's the MVP. Uh, in this, this uh, context, I call it the most valuable person. Um, and, and for me in my business, I have the Donaldson Clinic up in Seattle, which is a sports medicine and physical therapy clinic. I'm not the MVP. See, my MVP is my right-hand assistant who's been there all 22 years, Rosemary Bennett, and she continues to run that business as, is, as if it's her own, for one thing, but also to perfection. And so she is the MVP without a doubt. It's somebody typically who is in the trenches every single day or in the back room really making the engine of the business keep on running for you. So those are just some of the top 10 plays that, you, that every small business entrepreneur ought to, ought to know. You know, back when you and I were growing up, see, it was, it was the pastor over at the church, you know, it was, uh, you know, the, the older woman sitting in a windowsill watching the neighborhood. It, it, was, it was mom, it was, it was papa, you know, it was, it was family and it was community. And uh, see, and over the last 20, 30 years, it's been more you know, your entertainers, your rock stars, your, your athletes. Uh, who are in many cases so removed from the life that you're actually living. Uh, and we're looking upon those kind of folks so many times, hoping that they're going to come and, and help us and bail us out. Uh, many times now they are doing things in their own communities uh, that we don't know, and that's fine. Um, but I think sometimes uh, you know, the expectations we place upon athletes and role models uh, of, that, of that nature uh, you know, Charles Barkley had a commercial uh, 20, 30 years ago. I am not a role model. Remember that? That's and so he was speaking the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. He didn't yeah, want to be your role model, <laughs> but we want him to be our role model. <laughs> See, and, and why is that? So I think that we should kind of, you know, refocus onto folks who are nearer and dearer to us who can actually be part of our life on an ongoing and everyday basis. Our teachers, our counselors, our parents, and our pastors. So my, my dad, an old military guy, 20 years in the Air Force, 20 years in the post office, uh, you know, he just really set the standard for me. He set a bar to a point that was, was the bar that he rose to every single day. And he had that expectation for me and my siblings alike. And once I was able to start, you know, pole vaulting over that, I just put the bar up a little higher and just say, hey, let's just keep on going and, and thank you. I, I, I dedicate my book to my father and I appreciate him every single day. You can purchase Standing Above the Crowd at Marcus Bookstore, 1712 Fillmore Street in San Francisco, or call 415-346-4222.